So it has been a little while since I've built a system here on the channel that is focused more on base output. And I'm gonna be honest guys, I'm going through withdrawals. So what subwoofer should I use? How about this guy right here, the Rockford Fosgate T213. This 2000 watt RMS 13 inch subwoofer is a beast. In fact, this box right here that it comes shipped in weighs 95 pounds. But this subwoofer, it isn't just big. It actually has a bunch of different features that set it apart from other subwoofers. Let's discuss all of those different features. Let's do a little bit of an unboxing. And I'm also gonna tell you guys my plans for the project for this subwoofer. So when we first open up the box, we're greeted with another box. This subwoofer is really heavy, so it's important that it's shipped properly, and Rockford Fosgate did a good job of this with the double boxing. Inside, we have a nice Rockford Fosgate decal along with a caution sheet talking about how to remove this subwoofer from the packaging along with the manual. If we remove some of the side packaging here, we can see that this is actually mounted to a temporary MDF baffle inside of the box. A nice protective plastic piece over this to protect the top of the subwoofer. And with that removed, we've also got this screw box here. Let's take a look inside. For such a large, heavy 90 plus pound subwoofer, we definitely want to make sure that we have some nice mounting hardware. So it's super nice that they actually include that hardware with the sub. We also have this little bit driver that they give us. That way we can easily put this in our screwdriver and land these screws. Here's that mounting baffle. It works out well. They give us these nice hand holds so we don't have to try to actually get our hands under the flange. It's just a much safer way to actually lift this out of the box in we have our trim ring here as well and underneath where the subwoofer was there's also a substantial amount of cardboard protecting things So I've got this bad boy over here on the counter so that we can take a closer look and look at the different features. Let's get the trim ring put on top here. And as you see, this trim ring is nice because it reduces the amount of holes that are exposed. So we only see these couple of fasteners. That trim ring holds on with these machine fasteners in four locations. So first impressions on the Rockford Fosgate Power T213. Now I know this is heavy because I had to pick it up, but just looking at it, it is huge, absolutely massive. I mean, look in comparison to my hand. Along with its size comes substantial power handling. 2000 watts RMS, 4000 watts peak. If we look inside here, it's kind of hard to see, but we have a four inch voice coil. That's 100 millimeters for you metric folk. And as far as excursion goes, we have over 1.3 inches each direction or 34 millimeters. If we look in the manual here, we see that the free air resonance is about 25 hertz. This bad boy can get low. And I calculated the efficiency bandwidth product as well, and this subwoofer is well suited for both sealed or ported applications. Obviously though, with such a large, substantially sized subwoofer, you're going to have a larger subwoofer box. Even with a sealed box, their recommended volume is about 1.85 cubic feet, and for a ported box, about four cubic feet. So you're gonna need a larger box. Now one of the things that I find most interesting about this subwoofer is that Rockford Fosgate calls it a 13 inch subwoofer. Obviously, typically we hear of 10 inch subs, 12 inch subs, 15 and 18s, but 13 is kind of an oddball size. So I'm kind of curious, is this actually a larger subwoofer or is 13 inches just the total outside diameter? Let's take a look real quick. 13 inches does actually align with the measurement of the surround. It's from about right here to right here. The total outside diameter with the trim ring is about 14 and three quarters inches and the cutout here c is a little over 12 and a quarter inches you can see the metric equivalence here as well additionally the mounting depth is a little under 10 inches so definitely some unique dimensions on this subwoofer and some people might say oh well now you can't just drop it into a typical 12 inch subwoofer box but in my opinion the thing is when you're using a subwoofer of this caliber you're definitely going to be making a custom subwoofer enclosure for it anyhow so you can definitely account for those unique dimensions. Here on the side of the subwoofer are Rockford Fosgate's unique terminals that allow us to push connect up to eight gauge wire. It is worth noting that this subwoofer has just this single set of connections for the speaker wires. So we have an idea on the general specs of this subwoofer. Let's talk about some of the unique design characteristics that set this subwoofer apart from others. First off, if we remove the trim ring here, and I do wanna add, this is a metal trim ring, so no cheap plastic here. If we remove that trim ring, we can see Rockford 
Rockford Fosgate's unique flex fit basket design. With the flex fit basket, they have holes like this, but then they also have mounting slots. What's nice about this is because this subwoofer is so heavy, we can line it up in our hole, kind of eyeball it as best as possible, land our screws, and if we do need to make any minor adjustments and we've only used these slotted connections so far, it's easy to do so. Additionally, if you are using screws like this that go into the wood, sometimes those holes, if you take the subwoofer in and out of the box a couple of times, those holes can degrade. So what's nice about this is if your hole was here before, now instead of having to clock the subwoofer a different direction to reuse a hole like you would on a normal subwoofer, you can simply move this screw in that same slot. That allows you to keep the subwoofer clocked in the same orientation. You can make a totally new mounting hole to make sure that this is secured really well. The other thing I really like about these hole sizes and these slot sizes is they're actually big enough. I can't tell you how many times I've seen really large subwoofers like this from other manufacturers and they still use the same dinky hole size that they would on like an 8 inch sub. You can't even come close to using nice big bolts like you need to and you end up having to drill out the holes. Since these are large enough on the slots and the holes we don't have to worry about that. In fact this is a quarter 20 bolt which is a substantial size bolt. I'll actually probably be using these along with some threaded inserts in the box in order to hold it in and you can see it fits in there no problem. So if we move down here, we can see in here, this is unique, they actually have two different spiders. The advantage of having these two spiders is the separation between them allows them to maintain the control of the voice coil yet not sacrifice a low end response. What other subwoofers on the market will do is they'll only use one spider and they'll make it much more thick in order to control the voice coil and keep everything centered, but at the same time that impacts the low end frequency response. If we turn the subwoofer a little bit here, you can also see that the speaker wire leads are integrated into that spider. If we look inside here, we can actually see the voice coil. We can see it move up and down as I push it. It's pretty stiff in there, but what you'll notice is we're actually looking through a cut through right here on the magnets. That's because these are segmented magnets. They're actually about 120 degrees staggered apart, so three equal sections, and we have nice airflow in here into the voice coil for optimal cooling. A couple more unique features up top. So this surround here is actually custom tooled by Rockford Fosgate. It's injection molded it's not just stamp molded and this is what they call their vast or vast style surround they have a much better graphic on their website kind of explaining how the vast works but i did a quick little illustration here so this is kind of a normal surround where you have the hump like this like a cross section of the side view right here and with a normal surround the tip of it is kind of at this point but with their vast style surround it's a lot more taller but it allows them to bring that tip point a little bit further out, which means that the radiating area, the air that this subwoofer moves is larger for this subwoofer size. Finally, this cone material here is a three layer combination of glass fibers and aramid honeycomb. By using those materials, they're able to keep this cone very light, but at the same time, very stiff. And a nice stiff cone means that we're not gonna have any distortions as it moves, or we're not gonna lose any acoustical energy to that flexing of the cone. So what are the plans for this subwoofer? Well, first off, I need to make a custom subwoofer box. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you may remember when I did the Jeep Wrangler project. You guys can see that here on screen. I've decided to give up more space for a subwoofer box for this nice beefy bad boy right here. So I'm gonna be building that custom box. So if you guys wanna catch that video, be sure to come back and check it out or subscribe here on the channel. A special thanks to Rockford Fosgate for providing the T213 for this build. And a special thanks to Bernard, John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. As always, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.